Episode 159. Hello and welcome to Cider Chat. My name is Rio Wincoller, and I am the producer and cider MC of this weekly podcast, where we speak with makers, cider enthusiasts, and folks within the cider trade from around the world. Well, hello, Ciderville. Uh, I'm kind of catching up because I just returned back to my spot in Ciderville after traveling out to California. If you recall in last week's episode with Michelle McGrath, who is the executive director of the United States Association of Cider Makers, I was telling you before we got into that chat with Michelle, and you should definitely listen to that chat, by the way, because it's all about CiderCon coming up in 2019, the first week of February gives you lots of key pieces about why you should go. And believe me, you should go. I'm going to be there. I want to see you. I want to see you and raise a glass because there is nothing better. I mean, we could sit in our little hobbles, hobbles, I don't know, our little (laughs) kitchens, sitting up by the fire alone, which sometimes I do many a night. Uh, But it's so much better to hang out with people and uh, take that opportunity. So CiderCon is a place to be. I'm going to have a link in the show notes to that organization, which uh, essentially this is their annual trade fair, trade conference, trade scene. It is in the middle of Chicago Cider Week. It culminates with the Chicago Cider Summit at the end, which I will also be at. That's separate from CiderCon. But if you get the drift of what I'm saying, it's just full on. We're flooding the streets of Chicago with cider. Uh, no, No better act to do than that. <laughs> And in in February, why not? You people say go to Chicago in February. Are you freaking kidding me? It's cold. But last year it was actually balmy. So, you know, you never know nowadays. I tell you, it was actually cold in California while I was there uh, in the evening. Beautiful during the day. But February in Chicago ain't so bad. And to tell you the truth, where else would you want to be on a cold wintry night than with a bunch of folks drinking cider and enjoying some good cheer? and getting the scoop on on different things. So that's what last week was about. And as I was telling you, before I went into that little piece on CiderCon, that I was sharing with you that I was heading to Santa Cruz to ferry my mama back to my brother for the winter. She did get there safely. I want to say that it was a pretty crazy trip. We were doing the red eye because I wanted to try something a little bit different, see if we could sleep. Well, that didn't really work so well arrived and um you know there i am wheeling the wheelchair and getting mama to the hotel and lo and behold i left my cell phone in the cab didn't really realize that until mama got to bed and i was then going what the hey luckily mama has a a smartphone too so i was able to use that uh tracked my phone via the find your phone saw that it was sitting up Uh, likely in the cab's car, which I later found out was true, uh, up in San Francisco, about 13 miles away. Uh, You know, we're so dependent on our our smart technology now, and I was just getting geared up to go on this tour about Santa Cruz, Monterey Bay, to be working on a cider tour. So basically, I was freaking out. Uh, Didn't get a lot of sleep that night. Woke up in the morning, headed out to the airport, uh, I put a a loss mode on my phone, which tells a person to call this number. The whole time I was just kind of, I'm practicing this new piece here, which is to keep yourself calm and collected in really intense times. And, you know, 
it it worked. And a whole bunch of beautiful stuff happened as a result. I discovered a couple things, and I want you to put this in your little tool belt. Next time something similar happens to you. The first thing I did was I asked the hotel I was staying at, did they have security cameras, and they, could they identify the cab driver? Well, they couldn't do that, but they could let me know that he was driving a white Prius. So I'm like, okay, great. So we have the car. Next, I was going to the airport anyways to pick up the rental car for the rest of the trip. And I said, let me see if there's some kind of like cab taxi manager thing, because most airports have this. Well, lo and behold, they did. And aren't they the kindest folks at the San Francisco airport? I just want to thank Fo for helping me there. She was absolutely lovely. All the the cabbies were really great. I had to go kind of like in the belly of the airport to find their office. No windows down there. Uh, But there was all this holiday cheer. They had like lights up and everything. And I was kind of in freak mode, no no doubt. Uh, She she welcomed me in and she said, well, what time? It was like 1.30 in the morning, Pacific Coast time. And she was able to find that cab driver. And just as she was like showing me the photo of him and I recognized him, boom, on my mama's phone, I got the ring in. He was calling me to connect with me with my phone. So I learned a lot of different things there. One is uh, the technology of all these cameras. Sometimes they do have value for connecting people. One way or the other, we're going to get it. And uh, uh, that was quite a way to start off my trip. A little bit of high stress. Mama was kind of freaking out in the air, in the hotel room, uh, locked me out. I had to get like a security to get me in. <laughs> yes, it was crazy. But uh, lo and behold, uh, she, I delivered the package. We always say uh, when my brothers and I, when, uh, when my parents and now it's just my mom, when they would land from one coast to the other, we would text each other and say, the eagle has landed. And the eagle has now landed in Santa Cruz, spending the winter there. And uh, we'll see how it goes when you're you're that old, as my mama is. She's, uh, by the way, she's 98 years old. <laughs> Put that in your pipe and smoke it. Anyways, uh, when you're that old, every day counts. So <laughs> we made it, made it to Santa Cruz, and that is, uh, I want to share you a piece of that because there's some really fun news coming out of there. I did a bunch of recordings that will be coming out, uh, such as with Jay. Uh, by the way, he was singing Robbie Robertson from the band, a beautiful song. I'm going to put the actual link in the show notes, the YouTube clip. It's the band Christmas must be tonight. I thought that was just kind of like a nice seasonal thing there. Uh, but also recordings with makers too. So you will be hearing about that as we roll into this here podcast. Uh, When I come back, I want to share with you a little bit of a more update on a cider competition coming up also in February, like CiderCon. And then we'll go into what I'm going to call in this episode, which is a little bit of a a Cider Chat Live, bringing to you real-time travels out and about in Ciderville, in this case, Monterey Bay, California. The 2019 New York International Cider Competition is going to be held in conjunction with the 6th Annual New York International Beer Competition. If you remember last year this time, I was talking about that. If they got enough entries, they're going to split off and have a cider competition. So when you get your medal, it's going to say cider competition and not beer competition, which I think is a step forward. This is a big movement for the alcohol professor who set up these competitions, and he is a.k.a. Adam Levy. Um, Maybe some of you met him at CiderCon last year in Baltimore. Really nice guy, really trying to shake things up here. And the judges are top trade buyers from the New York metro area, although I know that he's bringing somebody up from a cider bar in Washington, D.C., so that's pretty cool, too. So he's bringing in cider bar folks, retailer stores, distributors, and importers who are all judging the cider by its category and price point. Totally different take on competitions than normal. 
It is open to all commercially made cider from around the world. Your cider does not have to be sold or imported into New York to be in the competition. So I'm going to have a link in the show notes to that. Again, that's a New York International Cider Competition. You want to start sending it in now. And if you want, you could also submit entry for the Berlin show. Send your ciders all to the New York competition, and they will pay for the shipping to the Berlin. And not we're not talking Berlin, Connecticut. <laughs> we're talking Berlin, Germany. So that gives you a pretty wide swath to be able to cover with just one shipping, which uh, makes it a little bit more affordable, don't you think? Okay, again, that is coming up on February 10th, the competition, so you want to get your entries in now. Look for a link in the show notes to this cider competition on episode 159. Oh, it's about time that we get our glasses ready. And we're able to kick back, if we can, to listen to a little bit of Cider Chat. Or perhaps you are there like little elves in the factory making your presents and gifts. Who knows? Wherever you are, I hope that you're having a good time. And right next to you is a glass of cider. We're going to switch gears a little bit. I'm going to bring in a little bit of a Cider Chat live music to get me in the groove to bring this special segment to you, which is a behind-the-scenes glimpse of my trip to Monterey Bay. I was there, one part to bring Mama, the other part to be planning a totally cider tour to Monterey Bay. We're looking at April, folks, and I hope this wets your whistle because there is some cool stuff happening there. Definitely awesome people and slam dunk cider too. That's all good. And not to mention, well, you know, when I thought about where should I have a cider tour in California, And I know there is good cider up and down that magnificent state from north to south. I had to go with this particular region primarily because this is the center point. This is where it all was at way back over 150 years ago. That story will be coming up in a upcoming episode of Cider Chat. But as I take you along here, you're going to get a little bit of a sense, I hope, And I'll fill in the gaps, if you don't, on why I chose Monterey Bay for this here cider tour. So come along with me, and we will be driving on to a cider meetup, actually a cider dinner, with regional cider makers in Santa Cruz County. And away we go. turn and here I'm going to take my little turn here it's it's the afternoon and in California that's when everybody's going home and traffic could get crazy which is one of the reasons why it's really nice to do a cider tour and you don't have to think about that and you could imbibe and just give the reins to somebody else that is key rolling up on this hill here and I'm gonna find this location somewhere it's up here not too far Look at my handy dandy map here. Oh, got a little ways to go. So it looks like there's a bunch of eucalyptus trees. You roll down your window, you breathe in deeply. It's like having like a, a menthol. Oops, looking down the hill, I'm seeing some nice apple trees. So I'm feeling like I'm getting closer. Whoa, that's nice looking out. I believe they're apple trees. Who knows? They could be like low, low trees of some other variety. There are so many fruits out here right now at this time of year. In December, there's a persimmon on the trees just dropping everywhere, uh, which is not something you want to have dropped on your car for sure. All right. Looks like once again that I might have gone too far. Let me see. 
pull over. People are just riding my tail here. And I gotta go back. Where am I again? Where am I? Now, Nicole's husband, Felix, did this beautiful map of this location where they had the big old barn garden. There's a Fuji, Gala, Apple scene, Gravenstein, Pippin, Cider Block, Crab Apples, Chicken Coop Creek. All right, let me try this again here. Main entrance, one lane, main entrance road. I'm going to turn around and see what I got here. Cars go fast around here. I'm just a country bumpkin living on a dirt road. And I'm going in the wrong direction again. Alright, here we go. I'm gonna pull in here. I can see clearly. Yep. Alright. One more U turn. You gotta know where you're going to get there. So they say. It is in cider, isn't it? You gotta know where you're going. It has to be this like whole hillside here. I, I was probably in the exact place I was supposed to be. I have a feeling where I pulled over was exactly where I was supposed to turn in. That is hilarious. Let's see. That looks like it. I'm gonna pull in here and I see a fire going, so it must be the location. There's a lot of trees here. This is exciting. Ick, ick, exciting. Parking spot. Yay. Outdoor fire spot here, I believe. Yeah, there it is. That's the little outdoor pit with logs around it to sit down on. Oh, me a mile. So this is down in like a valley hillside. The eucalyptus trees high in the top and all these trees here. Before me stood a large white barn. You'll be able to see some photos of all this on the show notes for this year, episode 159. I was able to see Nicole and Natalie, the two sisters behind the Santa Cruz Cider Company. And I was able to hear a little bit of an update on their business plans. They are going to be remaining the Santa Cruz Cider Company. It's an LLC, but they have to move their operations to Watsonville because, well, dang, you know, Santa Cruz is an expensive town. Not to mention, to make cider in it, oh, it is tough overhead. So they're heading to Watsonville, which is very up and coming. But the other thing about Watsonville, and just again, to put you in perspective where it's located, kind of like in the center of Monterey Bay, well, in that city, not too long ago, really, as the crow flies, it was known as Apple City. And that's going to be the new brand that they take on, Apple City Cider. So stay tuned for some updates coming out of that cidery as we move forward. In the meanwhile, when I saw Nicole and Natalie, the next step we did was to take a walk out into the orchard. Because there's nothing better than that. Let's do a walk. Okay, so this is the... So Lucivai is the property we're on. And that's oh, what they yeah, named I saw it. It means light of the valley. Light of the valley. So she hopes that one day it will be again, you know. Mm -hmm. It went into neglect well, for a couple decades. Oh, I have a feeling. Yeah. yeah. Goody. Yeah. Cool. But yeah, so what we've been doing, you know, is we take this, this map get here we do our events and stuff like that yeah. we give them these laminated maps yeah and then we walk around so we usually have like awesome. a, a check-in out here and then we usually just do this little loop right here uh -huh. mm -hmm. around so the figured red, yeah. the red delicious corn yeah oak. what kind of oak is that um this little guy right here live oaks live, oak? live oaks yeah i mean that's something that we don't have yeah. where i'm at 
Hey, cheers, you guys. Yeah, cheers. 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 Visiting. Cheers. Yeah. Nevada? Whenever I get a rental car, I, I, oh, you know, exactly. okay. I feel like, let me get one that's out of town because then I could like be totally spaced out. And people are like, oh, yeah. she's from Nevada. Give her her like okay. a white I just saw that. I was like, I didn't know where you were yeah. based out of. I was like, oh, no. I was like, well, yeah, you made a trek. I know. But you I, made even more, more of a trek. trek. Yeah. I almost grabbed the one that said Connecticut. Oh, I thought that would be better, yeah. but I thought I had too many miles. I was hung through yeah. Nevada. Yeah. I want people to like give me space, and they always let me in. And yeah. well, and then in Nevada folk are usually a little more rough and tumble. Oh, they so are. That's okay. One of those well, all right. Like, then. Oh, you're from Nevada. You're cool. You're cool. Yeah, I know. Right. I know. I know. You're good. There you go. <laughs> well, that fits. Rough yeah, and no, tumble. Give it in here, bud. Give it in here, bud. She's in, you can see all three kinds of redwoods from here. So this is, you know, a sequoia. Oh my and God! This is so about that is about 80, 85 year old sequoia. So I think her it uncle planted that. Looks like hundreds of years old. That yeah. it's it was like a fairy ring or a tree mm -hmm. ring because there's like two giant stumps next to it. Yeah, and then we've got Whoa. the coastal redwoods, you know, here, here, and over there. And then the neighbors have some dawn redwoods, which I wasn't familiar with until now. Dawn redwoods. Mm -hmm. Mm, yeah. mm. And we have 22 kinds of apples on the property now. This is, we think, the oldest tree. This is Simeon. He's the only one with the name. Dimeon? Simeon. Simeon. He's a bellflower. A bellflower, yeah. That's kind of uh, like unique to this area. Not unique, but it's it's something that's really used in cider around here. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 What's the soil like? It, look, it feels sandy, mm -hmm. but... Sandy. Is it pretty yeah. sandy? So it does not hold moisture very well. Um, we do, every time we plant a tree, we planted like 150 over the last mm -hmm. couple years. Mm -hmm. um, we dig up around the area, we fill it with comp compost, mm -hmm. gopher basket. We have a big gopher problem. Oh dear. Huh, gopher. They, what do they do? What yeah, do gophers go for the roots? They yep. go, they go, gophers mm -hmm. go for the roots. Thus, yeah, yeah. so now we're walking underneath a little canopy of sequoia. Uh, redwoods. I don't redwoods. know the difference. Coastal. What's the difference? Like, how can you tell the difference between a redwood and a sequoia? I think well, so sequoias are in the redwood family. <sighs> okay. Yeah, but these are these are coastal redwoods. Because so you see these more like between here and Humboldt, um, along the coast mostly, and straight, skinnier, you know, more clustered together. Mm -hmm. The sequoias need more room, I think, so they kind of stand alone. So this these guys here. There was a, a center one that's mm -hmm. gone, which must, must have been like right. gargantuous. And then yeah. it had all these babies. Yeah. Because <laughs> it's like, you know, I don't know, not 10 feet across, but it could be. Yeah. Yep. Wow. And this if you notice, something. it's a lot cooler right here. This is where yeah. we store apple bins sometimes in the summer mm. when we're not quite ready to press. We'll just mm. pull them in here and let them hang out in the shade of the redwoods. Yeah. Because this mm -hmm. is the Gravenstein block, so these are the first, <laughs> love these are the first ones to become ready for us. No kidding. And no. Gravensteins are like end of July, beginning of August. Okay, end of and July. Beginning. These are some of the ones that we have that are on standard rootstock. Um, so they're a little bit bigger, yeah. a little bit more difficult to pick. There's still some in the top middle, I'm sure mm -hmm. that we couldn't get to. And I remember talking to you, you know, way back. You were saying like how long it was taking you to pick mm -hmm. here, and so is is that this area here this that area. you're talking about yeah. because mm -hmm. it's so unwildly you know and just it's because of the larger trees yeah. yeah so you have to you know bump ladders around the tree and go up and down and you have to get in the middle of the tree and climb each one um the other ones that are on semi-dwarf i mean yeah. we're both Easy. tall we can stand on a bucket and reach everything yeah, yeah. so i mean when i look at these trees I, i'm i'm thinking oh that's a small tree to me mm -hmm. but um and I get how they could be difficult because they're, you know, they really have a wide spread and they're, but height wise, they're looking, oh, I'm going to say like 12 feet in height. Yeah. But that takes a lot if you're hand picking everything, which is yeah. Yeah. what you're doing here. Yeah. Okay, I want to walk mm -hmm. in these guys a little bit yeah, here. Because it looks like there's some um, graphs. Is that a graph that? back there a really nice amazing looking graft or girdled or maybe we have been we started pruning recently too okay well this tree way back there with all the sticks on it oh. that one 
Oh yeah, it does. Looks like that's not, that's a graph there. Yeah. Looks like it was top worked. They cut it off at the trunk and put that on. Yep. Looks, it was grabbing I think that was the one that took us ten hours to harvest. Oh really? <laughs> we oh ended my up god. Our person hours and it, it's ten hours to harvest one tree. Wow. Yeah, these are all red and green grabbing stands. Yeah. So red and green. Huh. Not yellow. Yeah. Why am I thinking gravestine is yellow? It's it's like a, it looks like it has it has stripes or mm-hmm. not really spotted like the bellflower but like stripy, splotchy. Mm-hmm. Okay. Some are redder, some are greener. It depends on where yeah. they come from in the tree, how yeah, they yeah. are. Now these trees there you you are pruning like when are you pruning? They don't seem like they've been yeah. pruned ever they, like these, for a we, long we've time. We've lightly pruned for a couple of years. Um we, this is the first year we're going to do a heavy prune. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I mean, not that they look, you know, are you getting good production on these, them? Yeah, they're, so, they're kind I of biannual. I mean, biannual, a lot of places yeah. don't do any pruning at all, yeah. you know, they just let them be. Let them go, yeah. Yeah. Hi, so. Hi, Hi. I thought I'd tag along. Yes. I've been out here Ooh. in the spot forever. Yeah. You've been good. Oh, you. Good to see you. Happy holidays! Hi, Laura. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, nice Real to meet you. Color. You too. Ooh, watch out! <laughs> watch out! These these <laughs> apple trees will just embrace you. Oh yeah! No <laughs> they are something. Oh, God. Yeah, you got a lot of grass here. <laughs> yeah. That is something. You know, they were like top worked and yeah, uh-huh. rafted right there. So there, are, there are some notes oh, on the property. But yeah, we're not. Yeah, days, we're still figuring out what they are. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I bet, I bet. But um, boy, you know, nothing like having older trees in there. Yeah. The soil, which is is kind of sandy, really drains well. But there's like a moisture here, right there. There's, there's a, a creek, creek right, right, here. right there. Yeah. yeah. So I figured since they're on standard root stock, the roots go deeper. Dang. So we yeah. don't irrigate this block. Um, it just feels like the ground is really damp, damp. Well, Look at that. Finally got the right. Right. Got the yeah. I was going to say, two weeks ago, this yeah. was dust. <laughs> Just to bring you a little update here, Ciderville, while we were walking about, myself, Natalie, and Nicole, along came Laura Everett of SoCal Cider. She is making cider in barrels, doing all kinds of stuff there. And that's going to be the location for the upcoming cider dinner, which will be part of the Totally Cider Tour to that region. But in the meanwhile, the four of us kept on walking with the little dog out into the orchard. And then you'll hear a little break. And then there's a whole bunch more makers to be meeting as we roll along. But in the meanwhile, let's take a little bit more of a mini cruise to the pond and some trees. Do you have many of these guys here? Pippins? Mm-hmm. Pippins. So is yeah. this in this area here? Or is this there's there's just a couple. One, two, three, okay. I think. And yeah, the and then healing. they're all scattered throughout the rest of the orchard. All right, all right. So are the tags, like, obviously delineating, but when you've got two on there, I'm going NP, Newtown Pitt, and G2. Yeah, I'm not sure what the, the lettered, numbered ones are. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because yeah, it's all the way back in. to, like, her uncle. When he mm-hmm. made so it's known as still as the Silva Ranch. Right, so yeah. he was Ed Silva. Yeah. And he was the main, one of the main apple guys around. Um, nice. Her mom took it over, but kind of neglected it for a couple of decades. And then when her mom passed in 2013 is when she started to bring the health of the orchard back. Right. Okay. So it's been about five years. and But it's great for yeah. organic. and Yes. That, yeah. So oh she wants goodness, to get certified yeah. organic next year. Oh, wonderful. Huh. This Where is the old, the old chicken coop. <laughs> old and new. Yeah. We've got 14 in here and then three up at the house. And free range during the day so we can, you know. Mm. Now, is, is that something that you're maintaining? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, so that's my husband, Felix, and I. Yeah, all right. So do you live on this property here? We do, is, yeah. There's a house just oh, up you're behind there. the Redwoods. Okay. Yeah. I see, okay. So we, we met them in 2015. We started buying Gravenstein. So they, they sell most of their apples to Martinelli's. And that's the main buyer around here. Yeah. That's what kept yeah. the apple industry going. Exactly, yeah. Um, and we met them because Martinelli's isn't open early enough for Gravenstein. So they started thinking about what they could do with their Gravenstein, and they thought cider. So, 
yeah, they called us and we came and got theirs in 2015 and by 2016 we moved in. <laughs> wow, wow. But are they These continuing are... to sell to mm -hmm. Nellie's? Okay. Yeah, so wow. they're letting us plant some new trees so all the little babies are Wixen, Wixen crab. Oh, I see them, yep, on yeah. the side here. Yep. And then a lot so is this the cider? This is what you have as a cider? cider? And then there's some over there as well. Okay, we planted right. some Yarlington Mill and right. Kingston Black this year. Great, yeah. great. There's one gigantic, beautiful black twig in the corner. Wow. And it looks like it's fenced okay. in the property, so you don't really have to worry about deer coming in here? Or, yeah, or it, it, is, it is deer fenced. Every once in a while, I'll find deer tracks. Yeah. But, um, but they haven't done much damage. Yeah. Lately, we have coyotes. Um, Do they come in all kinds here? Of, oh yeah, lots of coyotes. How would they get in here if the? There's you know, well, there's a creek, so they can oh, come, so in they come out up. I see, underneath. I see. Yeah. yeah. So wow. this is um, a pond that we actually got a grant to put in for the oh, native red-legged frog. So we're trying to oh, encourage wow. the, you know, the red-legged frog to move in. But yeah, there's a few red delicious there. Mm. Um, when we've had I think one or two weddings on the property, that's where people get married. Is kind of you know beautiful. Set up a little spot there. Can we take a walk up to the sure. pond? Yeah, that, I love I love to see it. It is not holding water. It's not um, this year. Yeah, because is, not like you haven't had enough water. Yeah, so it's just, um, it filled the year they did it, which was the winter of 2016 17, because there was so much water that year. And then last year, it, um, it was already dry by January or February, I think. Wow. But they'd like it to be able to fill and hold water till August. Yeah. Um, for this frog that's endangered in the area. So this is oh. a whole Watsonville wetlands came in and planted all the native plants in the area. Is that what all the flags are mm -hmm. here? These are all the native right. plants. Yep. I see. What would be a native plant that is, is it these like little furry? A lot of the grasses. Okay. Yep. Um, there's some yarrow and then these kind of, you know, taller, greener yeah. pond grass. Wow. So we're looking at like kind of a, a bean, not a fully bean shape, but it's like a, almost like a teardrop kind of mm -hmm. shape. And I would think with all the rain you had this year, it would hold, but maybe it's just the ground just kind of swelling up like an oak barrel yep. waiting to hold the water, right? That's what we're thinking. It's, it's soaking in at least, so that's good mm. for fire suppression and yeah. for the plants. Those beautiful eucalyptus trees that I know is mm -hmm. on my way down here. It's just, mm -hmm. oh, I love those guys. It's always like I come home, I'm like, oh, yeah. right, mm -hmm. good cleansed in my head again. And so what we learned too is that the eucalyptus, um, the blue gum eucalyptus and the poison oak are the first things to flower in the mm -hmm. spring and so the bees, if you the have bees, those on your property, yeah. the bees are attracted to those. So we let, you know, other than the few pathways, we let the poison oak go here because mm -hmm. it has that early flowering. Ouch. So where's the, where would I see poison oak here? So is it's going it to be a lot kind of around the fence line. Yeah. Right there. Oh, okay. All right. So not necessarily in the orchard. Yeah. yeah. We try and yeah. keep it out of the orchard since, you know, yeah. the kid and the dogs are running around. Yeah. So all those like little water suckers coming up and, or, you know, mm -hmm. suckers we'd call them. Yeah. It looks like little crowns on the trees, but. I don't think those have been pruned in two decades. <laughs> yeah. They're going to be happy when that happens. Yeah. Is that this winter's project? I don't know. That would be next winter's project. It's yeah. a little overwhelming sometimes. We're going to really get into the Gravensteins. Yeah. Yeah. You said those are red delicious, right? These are reds, yeah. Yeah. We don't care too much about those. Yeah, I was going to say. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and so that's what kind of what some of these standard ones are, are reds. And this is going to be our grafting practice. Okay. Because then we'll bring here the few little guys or the Yarlington Mill and Kingston Black. They have the Scion Exchange here, which is okay, kind of cool. Good, so in January, good, good. I'll go to that and see what I can Where's get. Where's that out of? Um, so it's part of the California Rare Fruit Growers, oh. the Monterey Bay chapter. So I joined wow. that a couple years ago just to go to that event, and it was awesome. I got 15 different kinds of apple tree Scion. Um, and then, of Fantastic. course, knowing the Everett's and the Mans and stuff like that, I'm sure we can do a trade this year. Yeah. Um, Great. Yeah. What? So I'm, gonna, I'm just going to describe it. So we're up on the top of a hill. We're looking out at this beautiful orchard. You know, where it's December, and so they're like a grayish kind of hue. Um, and it's an orchard that's that's kind of a little sleepy in a way. Uh, and I actually look at it. I'm kind of happy because it's not like totally chop chop chop. And it gives you. It just speaks volumes of like potential right there. Mm -hmm. It really does, saying, oh, yeah, we'd like this. Get, yeah. Kind of like when you get a haircut and you start feeling good about that. Yeah. Sweet. Yeah, this is really pretty. And then you're, you're just in this incredible bowl here. Pleasant Valley, yeah. 
Pleasant. Pleasant. Pleasant mm -hmm. Valley. So it used to be 200 so acres of apples. And right you know, in this valley, mm -hmm. stretching and out. And it was all the same owners that are, you know, same the family. Silvas. Yeah. Wow. And then as people passed and married and stuff, it got smaller and smaller. Yeah. And her cousin still does manage this block, and there's another grower across the street. So it's apples all the way from here to Freedom Boulevard. Um, but then across the street here is a neglected, and then up the way they've planted grapes and olives. Mm. But across is more apple orchards. Mm -hmm. That are neglected. Mm -hmm. And almost nearly gone. <laughs> mm. Mm. The Santa Cruz Cider Company is using these apples. So you're also working with Five Mile. Correct. Right? Yep. One friend, Dave, who has just two acres of apples. But he's the what got us our start. Like him letting us play on his property and getting to know the varieties okay. is what got yep. the cider company to I start. See. So we still use his two acres of Gravenstein and Pippin and, and Great. crab apple. Wow. Wow, wow. Yeah, this is really quite the location in this like little hub here. Yeah. It's amazing. Flat, sunny acres in Santa Cruz. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, nice and flat, which makes it nice for picking. And, yep. you know, obviously somebody did put some consciousness in planting this. And thank goodness that <laughs> the apple trees are still here. Yeah. After that walkabout in the orchard, it was time to head back to the 1880 Apple Barn and have a cider meeting and then a cider dinner. And don't you know, there was quite a bit of cider flowing too. So let me call out or give a shout out, if you will, to some of the makers that were there. We had Robbie Honda of Tanuki Ciders, Jake Mann of Five Mile Orchard, Katie Ryder of Ryder Ranch Cider Works, Laura Everett, as you heard, of a Soquel Cider, and Aaron Cerventi of Cerventi Ranch Cider, based in Watsonville. It was fun meeting everybody, and you'll hear a little bit of that going on next. Hey! Hi, Katie! How are you? Good to see you! Yay. Oh, oh. Yay. Watch out for the railroad. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh, there's Robbie. Hey. Hey. Hi. Hey. Hi. Hey. Hi. How's it going, buddy? What's up? Jake. Ria, welcome. Thank you. Hello. Hello. This is Ria. This is Hello. Auntie Ria. This is hi. Nika. Hi. Is Say it hi. Nika? Mika. Mika. Mika Sue. Hi, Mika. I love your she mermaid. She has a podcast. She has like a radio show. It's so really her cool. microphone here. Yeah. You want to say hello to everybody? Mm. <laughs> okay, that's all right. <laughs> Yay. Well, I have some ciders in the car. I'm going to grab out two. All right. Oh, what a memorable evening that was to hang out with such fine quality people. Oh, and drinking so much cider. I want to really... Uh, raise a glass and thank Santa Cruz Cider Company. That's Nicole, Natalie, and Felix. Not only did they host that event, they gave me a little Christmas present. And part of that was a card filled with uh, a donation to Cider Chat. I mean, wow, these these people, they are working hard. And to, to do that and support the podcast, it just it blew me out of the water. Uh, that evening, I went home with a bunch of cider that actually made it home here. So I have some cider from Tanuki Cider Company. Thank you very much. Some from Soquel Cider Company. Thank you very much. And some amazing cider from Santa Cruz Cider Company. Ooh, one of their big bottles of the Champagne Method Cider. Dang, that's good stuff. Oh, we're going to be sharing that here on New Year's Eve, don't you know? And I'll be tasting it and preparing you as we make our way towards the Totally Cider Tour coming up this spring. In the meanwhile, when I come back, we're next going to be driving down to Watsonville, just a little further south of where we were the night before. So hang on to your glass, and away we go. Last night's cider meetup with the makers of Monterey Bay area that is uh, well let me explain it like this you look up in the sky and you see a crescent moon well the top part of the crescent moon is where santa cruz is located and you go around down to the bottom and that's monterey 
in the middle is an area called a Moss Landing. And all over are these amazing apple orchards that are being revived, lovingly cared for, pruned for the first time in years by makers, upstart makers who are just totally jazzed up for cider, which makes this a really fun area to be in because you got the California scene and you also have the the weather, the view. I mean, heading down south right now, I'm looking out in the distance and when you go down south on uh, Highway 1 in California towards Monterey, all of a sudden you see giant mountains in the distance. It just feels like a world-class experience. This morning it's a little foggy. Sometimes that happens in the morning here because you're right on the coast. It's really sweet. And where am I headed this morning? I am headed to Martinelli's. Martinelli's Cider Company uh, to speak with John Martinelli. This is a legacy family and to sit down with John who is the CEO, general manager of this family run company. I'm coming in and on both sides of me it's just flat, 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 fertile fields. I'm not sure what's planted. Maybe those are artichokes over there. All kind of turned into the soil. I'm here in, what month is it? It is December. It's hard for me to believe because December at home for me is it's like zero degrees there. But here, no problem. Now, one of the things I'm seeing are all these hoop houses. This is what's happening to this area. Apple orchards are being taken down to make way for the more profitable berry business. The sad thing is, is they're taking up apple trees. Now, do the math. How long does it take to grow a berry bush? Versus how long does it take to grow an apple tree? And what kind of quality do you get on young apple trees versus older apple trees? It's a no-brainer. Don't cut down apple trees. Save the orchards. Which is part of my reason for being here. I really want to showcase this region. Encourage people to stick with it. Don't get, I don't know, don't think about failure. You're working towards success and there's no time for failure keep it going up. So that's a big part of it. Uh, I see the sign that says City of Watsonville. It's an industrial area. This is a huge farming region. And of course, it's the location for Martinelli's Cider. So I'm going to be pulling up here somewhere. I'm not even looking at my GPS right now. Just kind of looking all around because I'm a little bit early. I know we're going to be talking about the business and then also looking at the company store, like museum that has so much history of this area which was once called Apple City. So let's bring it back, shall we, Ciderville? And uh, raise a glass to that. I am in the boardroom of Martinelli's and uh, it's a really nice boardroom because it's flanked with cider bottles all over the place. A lot of photos of the process here that they do to make the apple juice and then I'm on the far end of the room which would be really the front end of the room there's some black and white photos here of uh, let's see the packing crates uh, was a while ago probably looks like yeah it looks like glass bottles on their side the classic sparkling apple juice bottle with the foil top the classic billboard that would be everywhere with Martinelli's gold cider, drink your apple a day slogan, and then these uh, glass bottles that then turn into a yellow apple, which is lovely. I mean, talk about branding. Also, <laughs> there's on the side of a bus, an old style bus, you know, kind of a rounded style bus. It says, a bewitching treat, Martinelli's gold metal cider. And there's like a witch with a long nose and not the best looking teeth and a ponytail and a pointy hat. And she's doing a spell onto the Martinelli's bottle. Some, some really neat photos here, including, I believe, some of the ancestors who were part of this operation, the different Stephen Martinelli's over the years, the family photos, really cool stuff to see. And then on here is a case of the Martinelli's. It comes in uh, 12 bottles per case. Alcohol, 5.7% by volume. That's really 
Also, we want to talk about the anniversary edition celebrating 150 years. Very cool. Honest to goodness, I don't know why I was speaking in such a hushed tone since I was the only person in that conference room. But I was because it kind of gave you that sense. And I, well, truthfully, Ciderville, I was a little nervous. I mean, Martinelli's. I had been drinking Martinelli's since I was a kid. And everybody I talked to on my trip there was saying, Martinelli's. I know Martinelli's because it is everywhere. It's something that whether you drink cider that is fermented or just sparkling apple cider or sparkling apple juice, as they call it at Martinelli's, you most likely have opened a bottle of Martinelli cider. It is everywhere in the U.S. and also worldwide. So you could kind of get my little bit of like, oh, I got to speak quiet because the excitement was building. And I wanted to just give you this little snippet of my original meetup with John because the actual chat, I will be cutting this out just due to the fact that we had so much to, so much ground to cover. Uh, I mean, how do you cover 150 years of a family legacy, a business like Martinelli's in even one day? So this will be cut out for that upcoming episode, but I just wanted to share it with you to give a sense and a flavor of this guy, the man at the helm, the person who is like the namesake of the namesake of the namesake, all these Stephen Martinellis. Well, this is Stephen John Martinelli, the CEO and general manager when we first met, just to give you a little snippet. So away we go. Hi. Yeah, how are you? Good, good to meet you. Nice to meet you, thank yeah. you. Yeah. So you got your cider chat shirt on. I right? do, well, you know. You walk into unknown places, it's good to be identified. Exactly. You don't, you know all about that. Well, I, I actually, it's, uh, I usually wear my, my logo wear, um, but today since we're not filming anything, then I don't have to do that. I can just be me. I kind of like that phrase, and I know that was really short, and that's all you hear of John in this episode, but I liked that ending, so I could just be me, because this guy is really authentic. In fact, I'm going to be posting a photo of he and I that we took a little selfie. So warm hearted, so passionate. And guess what? He agreed to lead the tour at Martinelli's and show us the operation on the Totally Sided Tour coming up to Monterey Bay. Now that is something, I mean, to be able to go into a facility that produces so much juice, to see their workings, to meet someone who has been part of a family that's been making cider since 1868, that is just going to be wow. And the fact that John's going to be part of that tour is really, really exciting. I'm super stoked to be rolling out of 2018 and looking forward to 2019, knowing that we have an Apple company that's been around for so long, getting back in the game after actually a very short window of time. They stopped making cider in 1979 and came out with this cider this year in August to celebrate their 150th year. But they did not start the company making sparkling apple juice. It was a what Americans like to call hard cider company from the get-go. But in the beginning, Martinelli's just called it cider. They never called it hard cider until much later on. So kind of interesting in that way. Uh, I, this is good news. I really feel this is really good news. So if you are a commercial producer or if you are a cider drinker, always kind of lamenting, saying, I can never get cider to my to my door. I really feel that Martinelli's entering the market now after so many years and having such a broad reach is going to help move up the education level for so many people and have folks who don't normally try cider, trying cider, maybe for the first time, uh, because they trust. They trust that brand. It's like a household name. It's, it's in grandma's cupboard waiting for the kitties to show up and serve them a little glass of something special, something that she could pour into a glass, a fancy glass, and make the kids feel really cool. Okay, I'm sharing with you a little bit of my grandma experience when I was growing up and, and having that before I was of drinking age. This is something that's really important to notice. I want to also put it in this perspective. We have some large cider companies in the U.S., but they are run by beer companies. They are brewers. Martinelli's is 
an Apple company. Something very, very different there. And uh, not only does it bode well for just for cider education, but it continues with to, to hold that market. You heard earlier Nicole speaking about the fact that the property, the orchard they're on, is selling to Martinelli's. That, if not for that company, a lot of those orchards would not be there right now. They just wouldn't have been. And so they kept that market going for so many years in a tough, tough climate. So hang on to that. That chat is coming up. I can't wait to go live with it and share it with you. In the meanwhile, I'm going to post the little selfie that I took with John. I absolutely adore the guy. And I'm very happy that they are still around to celebrate 150 years. Quite remarkable. The rest of the week in Santa Cruz, I was bopping around here and there, checking out the scene and fine-tuning the Totally Sided Tour to Monterey Bay just for you. If you're interested and you want to get on the list now, do send an email to me. That's Ria, R-I-A, at ciderchat.com. to thank all the good folks who are patrons of this here podcast. In fact, last week came in a new patron to Cider Chat. So I want to give a big thanks to Mark, who has the same name as my brother. So you got to be a good guy, Mark. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. It always makes my heart swoon knowing that listeners like you are helping to keep this podcast and also Cider to continue going up around the world. This is Rhea Wincaller signing off for now. Looking forward to seeing you in Ciderville. Going up, going up.